Hey folks, today we're gonna uh, replace the rip cord or fix the rip cord, pull cord on a Husqvarna uh, 440. So mine, I pulled it this morning and uh, there's a little knot here, just pulled straight out. So the first thing we're gonna do, like I've already done here, is uh, back off these four screws you can see. Okay, that's gonna require a four millimeter Allen bolt or you can use a flathead screwdriver, but the flathead's kind of a pain, so I'd recommend using the Allen. So we're gonna pop that open. And once we get that off, don't lose your screws, uh, we're going to see this guy inside, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to actually pull this black piece off. Now, if you already have your rip cord on there, uh, this is going to be under tension. Um, but in my case, it's not because the cord pulled out. So it's not under tension. Uh, but next step we're going to do is back this out, same 4 millimeter Allen. Okay, so that screw's all backed out, nice and easy. And when we take this guy off, we're gonna see that underneath here is a spring, okay? So like I said before, make sure your cord is not on there because the spring will be loaded if you uh, if you try to pull it off and things might go flying, okay? Uh, as you can see here, I'll bring this up closer. This spring, okay, on the bottom fits into that little hole right there, okay? As you can see, right there. See, that guy goes right in there, okay? And then you can also see on the top is that spring piece right there which goes into that little hole right there okay if we look at the underside it goes in like this Okay, right. I don't know why I was trying to put it into here. It actually goes back over into that spot right there. You can see straight through. All right. Sometimes camera work is hard. And it'll just rest in there. And then this end, like I said, will go into this hole here. Okay. But first, we need to tie on the rope. The rope's going to end up going, uh, coming through this track. Okay. And we can see that it enters, focus up on that, enters into the wheel right there. Okay, which corresponds to this part right here, which is where the knot will be. And what happened with mine is my knot was small enough that it just pulled straight through. So we're going to undo that knot, and then we're going to feed it through here. Okay. I'm going to feed it through there. Tie the knot, and then wind it back up. Okay, so you can see what I did is I threaded this line, the pull cord, through here first. Okay, obviously, because when we wind it up, we want it um, nice and tight here. Okay, we want this pulled in once we charge it up. And then um, right here, I fed it through that hole I showed you before. Okay, and then through there. Now we have to tie the knot. And I also untied the knot because, uh, you know, I mean, this is only the second time I've used this chainsaw. And um, while Husqvarna might be good at making chainsaws, apparently they're not great at tying knots. So that tiny little knot... Uh, wasn't gonna do the trick. So Hey folks, so I ran into some issues with the part of the video where I show you how to tie the stop knot So what I thought I would do is uh, I finished the project and instead of taking everything apart and doing it again I figured I'd just show you how to tie the knot uh, using this piece of 550 cord right here. Okay, so what we're gonna do is um, This is gonna be the end that you've already fed through that's near the wheel Okay, and what we're gonna do is we're going to wrap it around our finger like this, and then cross over like that. Okay, make sure you can see that. Okay, so we're gonna cross over, and then we're gonna cross over a second time, just like that, okay? And then we're gonna slide this off our finger, trying to maintain that uh, look right there, okay? Pull that through a little bit. All right, now we're gonna take this end like that, and we're gonna feed it through. We're gonna put it over the top of this and into this hole here, like that. Bring it in a little bit closer. Okay, just like that. Okay, and then we're gonna tighten it up. All right, now you don't wanna leave 
and that's your stop knot. You don't want to leave this much slack in there. It's going to get in the way. Okay, so when you dress this up nice, you want to just have a tiny little bit of extra line at the end there. All right, but this is a much more significant knot, much better knot than um, was tied on there before, and this will not come out once you have it in place. So uh, now that we've got our knot tied, let's get back to the saw and finish up the project. Okay, so I dressed up my stopper knot a little bit, and when we charge the spring, which is what we're gonna do now, first we're gonna put this in here. The spring that's charging is actually under here. Okay, that's what causes it to recoil back um, when you pull on it. And um, this guy right here, we're gonna put in, uh, in place, like so. Okay, make sure your knot is kind of out of the way. Okay, and like I said, that goes into that little hole right here. There's gonna be two sides to this, right? See how this one's perfectly lined up and see how the other one's a little bit offset? One's a little offset is the one that's gonna go into the base. And then you're gonna take this guy. Uh, there's our spring hole right there. You can see it, okay? I'm gonna line that up with this. Make sure that fits nice and flush, okay? And then screw it on. Okay, once you get it screwed on, uh, we're gonna go ahead and wind this up. Uh, we can do that by placing this rope in here and winding it up. It's a little bit harder than it looks. <laughs> but you can start to feel the tension as you pull on this string. Okay, once you have it about three times. Okay, once you have it about three times, you can go ahead and take it off. Okay, see I took it off and I just let it pull my finger right there and then feed it in. Little twist there. Okay, and I don't have enough uh, slack there clearly, right? But what I can do is the same thing I've been doing is do it again, tighten it up, wind it up again. Okay, and there we go again right there. Try to pull this slack out. It's all twisted for me winding it, okay? And then there's an orange guard there, same thing, just let it feed itself in. And that's pretty good actually, maybe a little tight, but pretty good. So now we're all set. Okay, and it's not coming off. Test it a little bit, and then throw it on your chainsaw, and you're good to go, okay? So you can see it nice and tight, it's not wobbling off at all. Uh, that's all tightened up, nothing coming loose here. Okay, uh, we're good to go. So like I said, that spring that's inside there is actually the one that's gonna be driving the um, the actual uh, chainsaw itself, okay? Inside, underneath this white piece is the other spring, and that's what we just charged up. So we should be all set. The only step left is to put it on and give it a, give it a pull, test it out. Okay, just for completeness, uh, putting it on, same as taking it off, four screws, one, two, three, and four. Okay, now we're all set. We're gonna flip it over and give it a tug, see if it runs. Okay, folks, there you have it. Uh, we were able to start, uh, give it a couple pulls, no problems, didn't come loose at all, snap right back into place. Okay, still staying pretty tight. And that's it, um, worked great, no issues. If you have any questions, uh, leave them in the comment section below. Uh, thanks for watching, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe.